to see everyone this morning. Um, I know we're in a, we are, we're back in a kind of a crazy time, so we're going to actually uh, have our kids, we're going to keep them back here, is that right, Bonnie? Uh, keep them back here, keep them here, because we're going to try to uh, kind of take a step back and, and uh, protect our kids. I know that there's a lot, uh, uh, the schools are kind of, you know, nervous about it, I think they have to wear masks and all of that, and it's, uh, boy, it's just a, it's a tough time, and we want, uh, we want to be a part of keeping people safe, so we're going to participate in that, and uh, because we don't know everything, uh, we want to, we want to be wise, so we're going we're to err on the side of caution. So I'm glad you're here. Um, uh, this is going to be a, a great morning together. Uh, I'm looking forward to our, our, our music. I'm uh, looking forward to fellowshipping with you. And so uh, let's have a prayer together. Can we do that? <clears throat> Father, we desire to enter your presence. Uh, we realize that we're always there. And sometimes we just want to just want to just to just to get with you and, and just simply to talk straight to you. Um, I know, I know that um, if I were going to be trying to come to you just in my own heart, just in my own strength, um, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to. I know it's because of mercy, and I know it's because uh, of the great work of Christ that I get to come. I, and that goes for everybody in this room. We are, we are humbled in your presence. Um, I love Philippians 2. What a beautiful story. Of, of, uh, what a beautiful uh, message that is there. of The one who is equal with God uh, came to be a servant of man. And to even become the sacrifice for man. Humble. Humble. Father, I'm humbled in your holiness. The display of your holiness is seen all the way through the scriptures. I mean, we, we see things there where when someone were, you know, uh, you, 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 you gave this as an example. When someone lied to the Holy Spirit and the consequences of that those who profaned your temple, the consequences of that. Um, Father, well, just want to just want to thank you that we get to come before you. Father, um, there's so many needs that came in this morning. I mean, if there's 50 people in here uh, in this place, then there are 50 people who came here with different things on their minds and hearts. I pray that you will stir uh, within us, remind us that you are, you are going to meet us and that you're going to help us and strengthen us. And Father, we're going to be more than enduring. We're, we're, going, to be, we're going to find ourselves victorious. Help us to know that. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. If you would, go ahead and stand up. Have you ever had one of them days, just one of them days, where everything seems to go wrong? Well, I've had that morning, but I'm just glad that I can still be here and be able to worship with all of you. So let's just come together and make it a better day, and let's just worship together. Um... We did pass out the lyrics to the songs because we're having some technical difficulties, so hopefully everybody was able to get one. If there's somebody that's not sitting in front of you or behind you and there's an extra one, feel free to grab it, but definitely sing along. We love it. So that's worship.
not here, just please keep him in your prayers. He's been ill, so keep him in your prayers. We miss him. If you're watching, he. We miss you. <laughs> of Jesus and God is it? I mean it, nothing is better than you right uh, and so if we've had a tough day I hope it gets a whole lot better right now I know Jesus has done everything he possibly can for us I mean he came to the world left heaven came to the world he taught us how to live and then he took on our sins and died for us. And in response, he left us 
the memories of this that we're going to take of we call the Last Supper. And we do it in remembrance of him. And let me remind those that are not members of this church, if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're certainly welcome to partake during the time that we're, we're passing this, if you will. So if you'll bow in prayer with me, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another Sunday morning. We thank you for this praise group for our minister and the message he's going to give us. But our greatest praise is for your son, Jesus, and for this opportunity to partake of this Lord's Supper. We pray that we do it in the manner that we're supposed to and cast out all of the bad that's within us and take in the good. We pray this through Jesus and we say, amen. established what we're doing here now with this uh, Lord's Supper. And during that, and the disciples didn't realize what all was about to happen at all, but he was trying to prepare them. And he broke bread, and he blessed it, and he says, this represents my body, which shall be broken for you. Drink 
this, this represents my blood, which will be shed and to wash away your sin.
This morning I'll be reading from Revelation chapter 22, verses 12 through 21. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the water of life. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. And if anyone takes words away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this scroll. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Can we go ahead and stand back up and please help me sing this?
Father, I feel, though, as though we could sing the rest of the morning and just enjoy you. But Father, I, we know that it's important to, to listen to you in your word. Father, my prayer is, is that we as a church here at First Christian will become strong that, that whenever the wind of doctrines people blow through with that we stand firm that we stand firm in Christ and we stand firm on your word and we're not blown to and fro Father I also would ask that you would help us to become what you intended. That we would no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again. I want that. I want that for myself. And Father, I want that for our church. That, it's, that it really is about others, and it really is about honoring Christ. And Lord, I know a little bit, just a little bit, that there's a cost. There's a cost. But it's worth it. Father, thank you for this church. Man, do I get to see you in the lives of I am blessed to see what you are doing. Please don't stop. We need you. We pray in the great name of Jesus. Amen. I had the opportunity this week to go see a young man uh, he's 24 years of age. And he is, um, he has cancer. And I was called by a nurse. I, I like how these things work. I'm going to give you this example, but I need you to know that God is doing stuff in your life whether you've seen the, the actual evidence of it at that moment, he's doing stuff and he's, he's using you and he's speaking. And so what happened was I was driving down to win for a grief support group and I had call, got a call from a nurse asking me to go by and see a particular young man. And so um, I said, yeah, that's, that's great. I will, but I'm headed down to win. I've got this. And so I went down. And, uh, I didn't know any of the situation that I was going to be going into. And it was, it was just a, a beautiful work of God because I, I got down there and I did that. And uh, uh, I went home. I got cleaned up. I played with my grandkids a little bit. And I walk into the hospital, and just as I'm walking in, there's a lady that's walking out, and she says, are you Don? And I said, yeah. Um, and I want you to understand the timing of all this. This person was leaving, and I was coming in. And she began to tell me the situation because she knew this young man. In fact, she was related to him. And so I, uh, she told me the story, and so I get down there, uh, and I go into his room, and he is uh, anxious, and he tells me uh, that he's dying, and I could see that, and he was only 24. And so the concern was about his own relationship to the Lord. And so I uh, began to talk to him, but we kind of had to work through some things because 
he was he because I was a chaplain, he was nervous that a chaplain was coming to see him. You know, it's kind of like it's not you know. So sometimes I'll go into a room seriously, and then, then unless I kind of you know prepare them. When I say that I'm a chaplain, they say, am I dying? That's one of the first things some people say. No, 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 you're not. I'm... And so this guy was nervous about me being there. And I can tell you other things that, that actually happened that shows God's providence. But as I was talking to him, he wanted me to know that he was a believer in Jesus Christ and that he was not ashamed of him. But he said this to me. He said, I'm not ashamed of me. I'm, ash I'm, excuse me. I'm not ashamed of him. I'm ashamed of me. He says, because of the things that I've done, I just need to know that he's still forgiving me. And so we got to share scripture that talks about that specifically. And he said, he, he just, in fact, in that conversation, he actually asked his wife to stand out outside. Um, because he really wanted to know, could he keep this private? And his whole concern was that what he had done in his life, could he keep that private? And I, and I, I absolutely, I said, but you know, I said, the only thing is that I want you to think about is you don't want someone around you to miss what you have. And we talked for a little while longer, and we got to pray together, and uh, I'm not sure if he is still with us at this moment. I've been following him even up until this morning. Uh, that started all Thursday. Had a lot of young people around, you know, that's how that kind of works, but what a beautiful story of his own faith, and yet... And yet there was still, I wanted him to know that if he were to say anything to anybody at this moment, it would make a large impact on the people around him. Just let them know that you believe. And, and, and this morning, what I've seen in this passage and what I want you to understand is that you and I, are, we are on a threshold. We're on a threshold. That young man, that 24-year-old young man, is on a threshold right now. You and I are on a threshold. What I mean is we're, we're, in, we're at a time where there is a, a sense of urgency that's going on. Um, Jesus wants you to know that he's coming back. What you need to know about that is that his... Uh, his plan is to come back and be ruler over the world. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that. I want his authority. I want his ruling over this whole world so that we can finally be free. I want that. You see, as we look at the times in which we are, I was talking with some of the fellows on uh, Wednesday night. I said, hey guys, what are some of the signs of his coming? And one of the things Danny said was this, which is so true, is that there really are certain signs of his return. But what you also need to know is that there's nothing that needs to occur for the rapture to take place. So his coming is there are so many things that you and I can look for, such as uh, we can look for things for his second coming or those who are coming after us can look for his second coming are things like uh, the, the, the return of the Jews back to Jerusalem. I mean, there's going to be a large mass moving there. And what we, what, what we need you to know is that we are already seeing it even as we speak, even as I speak to you, the Jews are returning. We know for, we know for certain that 43% of all Jews have already returned to Israel. I mean, it was very significant in 1948 when they became a state, when they became a nation of their 
become very significant because Christ, that God prophesied this. We can go back to Zechariah where he prophesied that they were going to be returning back to their back to Jerusalem and back to Israel. The prophecies are numerous in Daniel and in Zechariah that, that they were going to be returning and they have been returning. They've been returning from France. They've been returning from Germany. They've been returning from America. They've been going back to their homeland. God has moved them to go back there. And we can go on and on. It talks about how that there, there's going to come a time when nations are going to gather against Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but it, 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 this is a little place, man. It's like, it's like you know, like it's like the size of Rhode Island. I think you can put like 40 Israels in Texas. And all of these nations, you're always going to be hearing about Israel. It's not something that somebody's trying to conjure up and trying to make things. I'm telling you, this is just all happening. And, and people don't even realize, many don't realize that it's all uh, part, of what, part of God's plan. And we can go on and we can talk about things. I, I'll share this with you um, you know, I've had I've had phone calls, people saying, Don, this this shot that we're getting, this this vaccine, is it is it the is it the chip that they're gonna put in people to be able to monitor them and, is, and all that? And I want you to know that I really don't believe it is, but I do believe that it, I've gotten the shots. I had to, I wanted to. Uh, and I respect people whatever however the Lord leads them. I just I don't have any word for that. But I want you to know that there, there seems to be a real conditioning there. In other words, now it's like, uh, you know, they're talking about travel. You can't have travel unless you've got your little car. They're talking about that. Some, in some places, they're already doing it. Uh, some places of work, you can't even work there anymore unless you get that shot. You, um, our hospital has just mandated this. Uh, uh, you have to have some pretty darn good reasons why you don't. And, and that's, so people can argue all they want to. All I'm going to say is it's a conditioning because there's going to come a time when you cannot buy or sell unless you have a mark. You're not going to be able to do anything. The Bible talks about it in Matthew chapter 24. Listen to me very carefully. And, I, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm paraphrasing the absolute facts is that people are going to have to go off the grid at some point. They're going to have to go off the grid because they're not going to be able to buy or sell. They're, they're, there's, there's, I mean, he talks about this. Jesus warns people, even people who have babies, you know, it's going to be harder on them because of all of that. There's going to be an antichrist revealed. There's going to be this one world ruler. We find this all through the scriptures. If you want to look at some of this stuff, I'll give you the verses. But in 2 Thessalonians 2, there's going to be an antichrist that's going to be revealed. And then the Bible uh, uh, teaches us that the Holy Spirit is going to be taken out of the way, not away from us, not away from the world, because nobody can believe without the Spirit of God in our lives. But what I want you to understand that his restraining is going to be gone, and then it's going to just, it's going to, there's just going to be incredible havoc. And it seems like what's, what it seems like is that the, the, what's going to uh, be the uh, precipice to this is going to be the abomination of desolation. There's going to be a temple rebuilt in Israel. And it is, uh, and, and, and this Antichrist is going to set himself up. And he's, gonna, he's going to uh, just uh, desecrate uh, by what he says. He's going to blaspheme God. And he is going to dishonor him. And that's, it seems like that's when the, the tribulation time will then begin. And you and I will have already been taken up. And so what I really believe is that, uh, uh, that, that when that happens, when we're taken up, and I don't know, sometimes I wonder if it's not going to be something about uh, all of these UFOs they're talking about and they can spread some kind of a lot. I don't know. I, I don't know this. I'm just throwing my thought out that somehow that they came and they've taken all these people or caused all this problem. Um, I do not believe that there are people on other planets in any form 
I do believe that it's either uh, other nations that have these capabilities or it is simply, I'm just going to say it and you can, you can, you can uh, think that I'm crazy, but, or it is simply demonic. I can go on and on about some of these, these signs, but things like a cashless society, I don't know if you see it coming, but we are headed toward a cashless society. The Bible has already predicted it. You're not going to be able to buy or sell without this mark of, of the beast. There's going to be a cashless society. We've been doing this with credit cards for a long time, and uh, it, is, it is fast approaching uh, to get rid of cash. And one of the things, because because it's going to become worldwide. But one of the, I read a report several years ago that what, uh, one of the reasons why they will, why they will in, 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 uh, uh, bring this into being is so that taxes will all be paid, one, and then uh, dark money won't be able to uh, be able to be moved around so easily. In other words, money that's uh, with drugs or, or anything else. Well, I want to, I, I could go on and on about some of these things, um, but I want to share some thoughts with you, with us for now. I know what I've done here in the book of Revelation. I'm very aware that I have not done a verse by verse uh, uh, teaching of this. But what I've, what I've sought to do is to see the practical side of the Christian law. Um, that we're, that that even during this very dark time. By the way, I need you to know that I I am here this morning so humbled. Uh, I am deeply humbled to consider these these uh, uh, judgments that are going to be coming on the earth, starting in chapter six all the way to eighteen. Um, I'm so humbled by it. I don't I don't stand here before you and go, man. You know, I'm, you know, that's, I'm excited about any of that because I'm not excited about it. I'm humbled because uh, the only reason why I wouldn't participate in those judgments is because of Christ on the cross. And that's why we celebrate this every Sunday because the, it is he alone that we have hope. That's it. That's all, that's all we've got. And um, so I want to share these thoughts with you in closing out this time. Uh, there's so much more I could say, but I want to talk about how that you and I want to have the same mind of Christ. That you can have the same mind of Christ. You can, you can be moved by him. You can, be, um, you, can, you can have his thoughts. And I didn't say you could have it every day, all day long. I got to tell you, I wrestle with stuff just like everybody else does in this room. But the more you and I are exposed to the word of God, our thoughts will continue to change. And I don't know about you, but I, wanna, I want radical change in my life, man. I want his mind. I mean, one of the things he taught us in Philippians 2, he said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So therefore I know that I can have that mind. I can think like him if I allow these words to become a part of me. And he goes on in that, and I, I, I prayed it earlier in that, in that the humility that he had, my goodness, uh, I have to deal with pride, and it's ironic that I would, but but, but, but the beauty of, of that I can have this humility that he had, that, that I, can, I can actually not see myself as better than anybody on the planet. I want this mind in me. In, uh, in, uh, in, if you'll bring up for me... Uh, Brent, Philippians 3, 20 to 21, and I'm going to get there in a minute. You see, there's this, what, what, he, what he desires for us, and I'm going to be, well, we don't even have it up there, do we? Brent, where are you? I'm kidding. Uh, uh, so let me just, let me just, I want you to listen to this, okay? These are, these are things that we find in the scripture that we can have his mind. For example, here's what he says. 
In verse, I'm, I'm not in Philippians yet. I'll be there in a moment. In this passage, it says, Behold, I am coming soon. And then later on in the passage, John says, Amen, come Lord Jesus. In other words, his mind began to think like him. He had became consumed with, oh man, please come Lord Jesus. I want you to come back. I want you to come back and reign here. I want your return. I want you to be here. It's like this in Philippians 3, 20 and 21, and it says this. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, watch this, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. And the word lowly is, I don't know how you feel about this, but our vile body. I want you to know that, that, that your body can have all kinds of crazy desires, but I want you to know that your mind can be transformed. You see, if we couldn't change, then we would not need to meet together. If it wasn't possible for a person that has done some horrid things, if it's not possible for him or her to change, then we don't even have a need to meet together around the Word of God because, because you can just go worship wherever you can, because God is seeking those who worship Him in spirit and truth, so it's not about a location. It's never been since Jesus was here that it's been about a location, you see. It's been about, it's been about what's going on inside your soul because you have become the temple. It's very deliberate that God has not allowed a temple to exist since 70 AD, that it was completely destroyed, never rebuilt again, but it will be rebuilt again. But what I want you to understand is he wanted to make it very clear that you are this temple of God now. And you can worship anywhere, but the reason, one of the reasons we need is not only to come and worship. Listen to me. It's really, you'd be hard-pressed to, fig to, to figure out exactly what their worship service was like, except for maybe in Acts 2 and maybe one of the two passages. He really kind of left it up to us how we, but he did say gather. He did say gather. And so we gather. And what we do here is we make it clear that this is the, this is the center of our lives. This is the center of our hope. And this is the book in which we want to follow. This is the book we want to follow. And so... We could go on and on. Remember, do you guys remember one of the, 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 the prayer that Jesus taught us? He said, our Father which art in heaven, right? I mean, there's just so much there. Just stop and think about that. Father, uh, heavenly Father, Father, God, Father. I mean, those things can blow your mind. Hallowed be your name, God. I want your name to be honored in this prayer. Whatever happens in this prayer, whatever I'm praying about, God, whatever it is, God, I want you to be glorified. I want you to be honored in this. Not, it's not about me anymore. It's about you having honor. And so, God, I need you to answer this prayer so that you can be honored. See? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The, watch this. I'm going to stop here, okay? So I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Thy kingdom come. You see, that's the heart of God. That's what God wants, right? I'm coming soon. And so we pray this prayer, and we literally begin to take on his mind. And we say, God, Lord, your kingdom come. Watch this. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not mine, God. I want to submit completely to your will. Just yours. I don't want mine anymore. I've messed it all up with trying to get my will all the time. God, I want your will to be done, you see. 
that kind of mentality. So what happens is, is that we begin to take on his mind, and if you go back to Philippians 3, 20 and 21, it's Lord, we're eager for him to return so that he will come and everything will come under his control. Yes, we want you as the Lord of everything. And then secondly, I like this. I want you to see it. Go back to Revelation 22. Man, I just started my sermon. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, this is not good. I will finish in a minute, though. I will. Man, I really thought I had all kinds of time. Cynthia, what happened? Did, did, I don't know. Notice this. Look at verse 17. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. So what does he say? The spirit is saying, do you hear him? Come. The spirit of God is saying, come. You know what? The church, the bride is saying, come. And those of you that have, have come to him, you're, you're, you're agreeing with God. Come. We, listen to me. I'll, I'll, I'll say this, and then I'm going to go on the, the very last few words. But listen to this. That God's grace would pour through you. That you would say, come, man. Come. Would you come? I mean, we're, we're, by the way we talk and by the way we live, come. Would you, would you come? We join him in that spirit. We are ambassadors. May our words be filled with grace. May our lives be filled with grace. He leaves the 99 to go get the one. So the last word that I have is this. I know this might sound kind of, uh, you know, well, how I got out, I got this out of this, but it says, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. If anyone takes words away from the book of the prophecy of God, will take away him from his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. You say, God, what, 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 what's that? You see, the prophecy of this book will bring blessing to you. I, I want you, I encourage you to read this book. God will teach you. God will teach you. Not only will God bless you, not only will God make you happy in reading this book, but I want you to know that, that what happens is, is that he develops within us a conviction that this book is not to be tampered with. The book of Revelation, for example, is not to be tampered with. I'm going to close in just a moment. It's not to be tampered with. Let me, let me tell you the person who's going to add and take away from this book is the person who has not submitted himself to this book. Has not submitted himself to the Lord who wrote this book. That's the person who's going to tamper with it, who's going to, who's going to change it and make it say what they want it to say. They have not submitted. Don't change this book. 1 Peter chapter 1 says, this book, listen, there, when God moved in these men, and there's no private interpretation. You don't get to have your own interpretation. You don't get to have your own interpretation. That's what it says. So we submit ourselves to him. Psalm 119, 105 says, your word lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And if you want to go through life wise, if you want to, if you really want to, then you want this book to guide you in life. May God help us to have the same mind as Christ. He's going to leave the 99 that are doing fine so much to talk about. So much. I thank you for this church.
thank you. I ask, Father, that you would continue your marvelous work in our lives. Boy, are we needy. I ask you, Father, to um, bring us to a place where we are in complete submission to you. I thank you. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Um, they're going to lead us in a song, and it's called Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. So stand with me. If God's spoken to you, I'm going to ask you to come. God's spoken to you. Stand with me, please. So um, what we want to do is, would you join me in a prayer for them? And I want to pray for their protection. I want us to pray for their, their enjoyment. Um, and that God would, uh, would do some great things in them as they learn uh, this year, okay? So, kid, we're so glad that you're here. We, 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 we genuinely love you. We're going to pray for you right now, okay? Can we pray for you? All right. I'll lead us in a prayer and we'll be dismissed, okay? Father, I am, uh, I am so thankful for each one of these kids right here. Lord, help me and help us not to be a stumbling for them. That all they can see is that... Um, we love them. That that's all they can really see. That we want what's good for them. But Father, the best thing I could pray is that they know that you love them. We ask you to be, have your favor upon them. We pray for these young people and all the kids are going to be there tomorrow and this week. We pray for protection. We pray for um, them that they find enjoyment in learning. Lord, we're in a crazy time. Bless these kids. We pray in Jesus' name.